everybody, today we're going to be looking at the step sequencer. And now after using it for a few weeks, I've really narrowed in on my favorite features of this particular feature in Logic 10.5. Uh, so what I've got is this instrument. It's uh, one of the quick sampler patches. I'm going to come down into the sequencer here and we can draw out all the notes if we want. Let's put this right at the beginning. And so we can do melodies and things with this. I actually want to, well, we can leave it like this. One of my favorite things we can do is use the note option. We can make different patterns with the notes. This still isn't my favorite feature, but we're gonna get there in a second. So we have two of these. Right, so we can do all of that with our notes and programming melodies and whatnot, but I love when we get to use some of our other features like the automation. So for instance, here we have the ability to automate various parts of our instrument, our smart controls, any of our effects. We can do things with our reverb, delay, phaser, pedal board, uh, other MIDI things with all of our MIDI continuous controllers. So for instance, let's do cutoff. We start them all on. So you still have to turn them on. And then we can change the value here like that. So now, And so now we've got this whole element here of being able to do a control over a variety of different parameters. Now, with this, we can also incorporate our MIDI effects. So I can come here to my modulator, for instance, just like this. Let's open up our Q sampler for a second. And just as an example, let's do learn plugin parameter and let's do course pitch. So now that's what that sounds like. We can come through automation and we have our modulator show up. And now I can do something like my LFO rate. And with the LFO rate, I can, let's see, let's open that up. Let's turn them all on and let's do like a wide variety of changes. So now my step sequencer is sending out data to control the LFO rate of the modulator, which is then controlling the Q sampler. So we can come up with some pretty complex little uh, patterns here, going back and forth between the step sequencer and the source instrument effects and or MIDI effects. So all of them now can play together in new and interesting ways. So we have all of that power right here. So these are the main ones we have, notes, an automation, and then we even have a learn capability as well, which means if, if you don't want to actually go through and dig through what's happening there, you can put it into learn mode and whatever data it receives next will then be able to be controlled. And let's just see how that works here. Not necessarily to do something useful here, but 
to literally just so fine tune just popped up and so that it did work even though we could have gotten there a different way um, that is one way of getting there a little bit quicker in terms of using that now this got me thinking about a few different things one of them is what if I don't want to do my MIDI programming using this particular instrument. Let's turn off that too. Bypass the module. So what if I wanted to actually have MIDI and the step sequencer working side by side? So we're gonna to go to other, we're gonna say new track with the same instrument. So now I've got this one here, and it still has, so if I push play, see how it's still triggering off of the filter cutoff option right there, but we're gonna come down into here. Well, let's see. Now let's just um, let's flatten just part of that anyway. So you can still hear that the step sequencer is working. The MIDI that I just recorded is also now being triggered. Uh, let's uh probably shorten this down and loop it out so it's a little bit easier to hear. However long this thing can be looped out. Anyway, you get the idea now because when I created this second track, it's not a different track. So driven keys here. This is still that source track, but I have two essentially a range window tracks attached to this single channel strip. One of them having uh, the step sequencer and the other one having just mi normal MIDI regions. Because they're sending different data, they're not competing, they're working in conjunction with each other. So that's another thing we can do with this. I will say that if we want to use this type of uh, control data or the step sequencer controlling various things on an audio track, it is also possible, uh, but you have to work through the external instrument. So MIDI destination would be IAC driver. I've done this in other videos. I'm not gonna do it all right now, but you have to send the MIDI data from this instrument track through the IAC into the uh, the audio track using the environment and then you can assign that to MIDI, uh, various MIDI pieces which will then go into that audio track and be able to control various things. Okay, that's a little scattered but if you're interested in that let me know in the comments and we can do a full tutorial showing how to use a step sequencer to control the automation or other data of audio tracks. Uh, I will also say that because, and let me show you this one more thing here, with this track, let's load up, uh, instead of the external, let's load up the Drum Machine Designer, which no longer allows us to have MIDI effects. So we can't use MIDI effects on this track. Totally fine. Um, it's kind of lame because there are some times that I would use it. But that's where the step sequencer really does come in handy because I can come through and do some basic MIDI control then on this track. And so say I've got an audio effect like an EQ, automation. Now I can actually draw in various control things that repeat so I could do something like the modulator would do using the step sequencer instead of having MIDI effects.
So that is a really powerful way to be able to work with this. Okay, that's it for this. I just wanted to go through and look at some of the main ideas here of how you can expand what you're doing with the Sepsuencer, not only working in conjunction with another instrument track that's attached to the same instrument, or uh, just using it all within the same one, or in this case, using it with the drum machine designer, which it opens up a whole series of things you can do with modulation instead of having MIDI effects, which we don't have there. And so that is a really good benefit. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope it all made sense. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and we'll do another video soon.